Hey, we're George and James, and today we're getting pretentious with Leanne Le Havis's Leanne Le Havis. It seems to be a common thing now that Leanne Le Havis, well not Leanne Le Havis, the bands do self-titled albums three or four albums into their career. Michael Kiwanuka with Kiwanuka. Yep. War um, Paint with War Paint. And all the others. Many others. <laughs> we've, we've gone into a YouTube thing now. Like, we're, we're, we've been very... Uh, Jazzy. Hey. Yeah. Does help we had a couple of drinks. Yeah. How, how are you, George? I'm good. Yes. I'm good. I'm currently living at James's place. He is. On his... on Well, I say the sofa. It's actually... There's a, there's a blow-up mattress behind the camera. But it does mean... Potentially more content for you lovely people out there. So that's... Although James is going to Scotland for a week. So, so probably not, if anything. But but we'll get back onto it. Um, uh, yeah. What have you been listening to, James? Well, we've probably been listening to the same things because we've been... Living together. Living together. Week. Yeah. Um, but one of the songs I'm very much obsessed with is... I think it's called The Greyhound by um, Trams. Yes. Ten minutes long. Um almost very like playing the same thing over and over but the tempo slowly increasing and yeah it's, a, it's good it's a weird one because it's it is an indie track i would yeah. consider an indie band track, yeah but the way it plays out is more like a prog track record. yeah like but they sound like an indie band yeah i'd say they sound sort of like post-punky indie they've got a slight kind of sports team vibe yeah yes like in that kind of modern well, maybe post indie is becoming a thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I think of like sports team, even like Crack Cloud a little bit. Yeah, and then you got um, maybe Jaws a little bit. I don't know if you know them so well. And that band that you show me that have the interesting music videos. Oh yes, uh, the Wants. The Wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're almost they're, there's a post post indie. indie. Vibe. Yeah, no, that's that's probably true. But I've not heard that phrase yet. Maybe um, we should look into that. Yeah, Crack Cloud, you've been, you just mentioned then, yeah. you, you're... Crack Cloud, uh, so it's a project, I think it started with like a, the drummer, and I think he wrote in a two of his other mates, but they were all, they, they were crackheads, and then I think one of them went to rehab, and they all persuaded each other to go to rehab at different points. And now there's like 14 of them in this project where they make all of the music, produce it, do the music videos, the artwork. And now they're like this cool creative agency called Crack Cloud that make really weird out there stuff. Yeah, the music videos that we've watched for them have been quite bizarre. Yeah. But like, in a good way. It's like watching, I, it, it felt like watching Mad Max. But it felt like watching Mad Max as if it was Mad Max the sitcom. Yeah. Um, I can't actually remember the name of the song. It's like kind no. of the second or third sort of biggest single that it, it felt to me like if you took Mad Max and uh, juxtaposed it, it with <laughs> juxtaposed it with um, Father Ted. Yeah. Or like yeah. Monty Python. It just like just that, that sort of kind of slightly slapstick but a bit, yeah. a bit more intelligent than slapstick comedy yeah kind of silly yeah. sort of but yeah yeah but it's interesting I, the name is quite fun yeah a bunch yeah. of ex crackheads being called crack cloud and their latest album which is really good suggested I might even talk about it at some point and I'm probably going to buy it on vinyl mm. but it's called Pain Olympics which is an interesting. I don't know what image that paints in your mind, but I think back to high school. Yes. The videos of the Pain Olympics. Which would. If you. Are this born, will be one of those occasions I won't put an image of it. Yeah. I don't want to get banned from YouTube. If you want to Google it, that'd be on your head, but. Yeah, I wouldn't advise it. No. But now that's going to make you want to Google it more, if anything. Yeah. I would say. Good luck. Um. The other thing that was a big discovery for me uh, was the FKA Twigs oh. Magdalene Mag Magdalene Magdalene yeah. album. 
which is there which also it, it confuses me because it actually has a really nice spine spine for a vinyl it's coloured but it's also a fucking stunning vinyl yeah. yeah but it was a it was a bit of a whim purchase for me wasn't it um, yeah we were just at the record store and I was like oh James well no you picked it out and you yeah. went oh I might get this at some point and you were tossing up between getting this and Led um, Zeppelin 3 yeah which I now also have but yeah it's just I, I, I think for me if I hadn't have bought it on vinyl though I wouldn't have appreciated it yeah. anywhere near as much because it, it is an album that you put on and you sit down and you listen to which I probably wouldn't have done if it was just like I was listening to it on Spotify that um, is something that I found interesting with because basically I bought rather than paying James back for a meal <laughs> I bought James Led Zeppelin free on vinyl because I thought he can remember that he can't remember having a few pints down the pub yeah um, but yeah I've never since being like what 15 I don't think I've sat down and actually listened to a Led Zeppelin album yeah uh, or at least I haven't listened to a Led Zeppelin album since I have so much appreciation for listening to music so actually us listening to that I was like Jesus Led Zeppelin were good yeah <laughs> like we had a long oh, conversation okay, yeah. about Led Zeppelin and then ended up listening to bits of all of the first two, four albums two three and four yeah yeah um which coincidentally Led Zeppelin 3 bit of a spoiler alert might it's going to be the next one it's the next might, it will be it's the next episode of the podcast yeah um but yeah FK Twigs uh, just that album's sort of and I know I'm late to the party but it's 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 blown me away it's like it, yeah it's an impressive yeah. album just so compl- like and we'll probably do it on the podcast at some point yeah. but just such like a complete vision which is I think can be quite rare to find especially from an artist that I mean FK Twigs has always been like an artist yeah but she has a vision yeah but she is on the more mainstream side of things I would say yeah she gets like, like slightly more coverage than I remember her first album coming out and she got nominated for Mercury I'm pretty sure at least got into like the top 50 yeah. albums so it's like she's done well yeah to get where she is but she does also push the limits of mm. what she can get away with I mean her her performances on Jules Holland are just if you haven't watched those that is something you should go and watch well she does a sword dance like rather than just singing a bit of a song and then doing a bit of a dance she whacks out a sword and does this really intense traditional sword dance in like a in like a white wet clingy uh, see through sort of dress thing yeah that just um, really represents the, the mood yeah and with like a really interesting hairstyle going on and stuff well she always goes that kind of wet yeah it's almost like it sounds grim but like almost like fresh out of the womb esque like it always looks very like raw yeah and just like she's just crawled out of some emotional pit or something yeah but very Talk- visually Talking of crawling out of an emotional pit, Leanne Lavis. Yeah. And this out al- this album. Um, it's an emotional album. It's definitely an emotional album. Um, you were telling me before we started recording that she'd broken up with her partner. So if I'm yeah, if I'm right in thinking, she did blood either four, maybe five years ago. Mm. I think maybe a year or two after that. I fact checked but she's like I think she broke up with him or like I think he broke up with her a year after that album and she kind of just ended up finishing her tour and then just went completely quiet underground wasn't even sure she wanted to do music anymore and then she does this yeah just like the rawest thing that she's ever done and we briefly touched upon it actually in uh, the Arcade Fire podcast because mm. it had just come out when mm. we recorded that but I think it's shown in the artwork of the record we were t- I, I mentioned mm. how 
the artwork for Blood was quite a, it was a very nicely done photograph portrait of her, but it was, it was very meticulously, like you could tell, t- meticulously designed. Yeah. Whereas the photos for this album feel like she's gone out with a friend or something and they've just sort of captured these pictures. Which is weird because I actually reckon there's more photos taken for this. Yeah, probably. But without the intention of there being. I think it was just, I think it's, they feel to me like they're almost like snaps from her f- phone they they feel like the context of this album being that she's mm. like broken up with some someone the photos from the album almost for the album almost feel like they could have been taken by him while they were together yeah in like happier like times that. you know what i mean yeah. and then and then she's almost like rediscovered them and put and now i'm, I'm sure that isn't the case but that's how it feels well, like i definitely looking think at there's the an art. aspect of like she was who she wanted to be in that relationship and then as soon as she lost that relationship she lost who she was Mm. and I think this album is now her knowing who she is and maybe it's similar to who she was or like the feeling of who she is now was similar to who she was then it's just taken this much time and it's like we were saying how on the deluxe edition it starts with bittersweet yeah the extended edition and ends with bittersweet She's still the same person, but it was the journey she had to go on to actually get back to the same point. Yeah. Like, she kind of got knocked off the horse, you could say. And it was just her getting back onto the horse and realising that the whole time she has been Leanne Havis, it's just been a journey to get back to it. Yeah. I mean, the artwork is gorgeous on this album. What I find interesting, actually, is if you actually look quite close on the artwork, it's actually quite almost granulated. Well, that's what I mean. I I feel like that's what almost feeds into the old photos taken a while ago kind of feeling. Yeah. In that they feel like they're clearly taken on film. It's very much like, because you get your photo shoots where you're composed or like all of these are definitely composed areas like yeah. pun, they've picked areas that have a good composition but they could have quite easily have had her position herself in a way similar to this but instead it looks more like they've been taking pictures in that place like maybe maybe there's like 30 pictures yeah. Similar to this. And they've just picked the one that actually felt natural. Rather than purposely trying to compose this. Yeah. Which is what I always like to do if I'm taking pictures of anyone. Yeah. I don't really... I, I think that's probably because I'm not a natural uh, photographer in the sense of like lighting wise. I'm not that yeah. kind of person. So whenever I take photos of people, it's like, mm. let's find some natural light and try and just get them to be natural and you just sort of capture and you can get like moments like that which are just very yeah like feels very un because you if you'd have actually got her to do that i think it would feel a lot more forced yeah and almost a little bit it wouldn't look as natural as that Mm. that's almost like she's not even posing she's just adjusting her top and the, the whoever's taken the picture or, is, yeah. is 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 just snapped away. Yeah, and they found true. it later and just. Yeah. Um, Obviously, this one on the right is a little bit more composed. Yeah. But even still, like it feels like there's a conscious decision behind the way she's standing. It still feels very relaxed. It's still very casual, which I think again feeds into my feelings that like. It could be that kind of story-wise, like someone else has taken the picture. Like it's the it's from their relationship. Someone's taken a pic. Like they've taken yeah. they're, they're out, and they've seen this like nice place. And he's going, oh, oh, Leanne, stand, stand, stand over there. there. That's a good photo. Um, it doesn't feel like a traditional album. Let's go and take photos. Artist pressure. Yeah. yeah. And to be honest, that's 
also feeds into the music. Because, like, for me, which song is it? I think it's the third track on side A. Yeah, Green Papaya, to me, you could sell that to someone like Beyonce and it would be a banging hit. Mm. But the fact that they didn't do that on this record shows how conscious they were of making it be remain as close to Leanne as possible. Yeah. Because like, even like we were looking at the writers on this album, there's quite a range of writers across the whole album. Yeah. But it, I feel like Leanne must have been very clear about the fact that she wanted as little as possible to make it as much her as possible. I think it's one of those examples of um, a, an artist that, again, we go back to what we were just talking about with um, FKA Twigs, about having a complete vision for an album. Mm. And that it's very clear on this album, particularly for Leanne Havis, that she has that vision, which I'm not sure necessarily came through on her first two records. That's not to say that the first two records were at all um, unfocused or no, not complete, but I don't know if they have the same sort of emotional completeness as this does. It's just, I think there's just a lack of honesty, like self-honesty, because like with Blood especially, I found there was a lot of songs on there that felt very emotionally weighted, but not one person's feelings. Mm. It's like listening to an Ed Sheeran song or uh, like Lady Gaga. It does, although yes, it's very emotional, it still feels like it's like five different people's idea of a sad situation all collected together. And when that happens, you don't, you almost don't believe it as much. Yeah. When you feel like an artist is, is just pouring themselves out onto each song, regardless of mm. whether they've got other people coming and helping to write stuff. It really comes through. I think this is why, if I watch, say, Pursuit of Happiness, mm -hmm. it's a good film, and it is sad, but feeling sad about Pursuit of Happiness is almost more like an algorithmic sad, like, Oh, they've hit all the, the trigger the points. Yeah. Marriage Story, on the other hand, it's almost so particular about one singular situation. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like you could necessarily... Like, it's not relatable to you, but because it's so honest in that one situation, it is almost more emotional, even though you're yeah. not necessarily relating to it. Because like you said, you're not from a divorced family. Yeah. Yet you found it quite upsetting. Yeah. So it's not relatable to you, but also because it's so true to the situation, it's yeah. still upsetting. And it was, and and it was so, um, and again, the example, the, the, the comparison to the end of the Havis is that um, the director and writer of Marriage Story based that film yeah. on his own divorce. Mm. And it's all about his own divorce. So he is essentially the Adam Driver of character story, in yeah. that story. And um, when someone, even if you can't relate to it, when someone puts so much of them into a project... Mm. you you it's it's hard not to feel something as a result yeah um and that's the same with this record like it's it's so much her yeah and i can't necessarily relate to everything on the album although i would say the the topic of i think everyone can listen to certain songs on the album yeah. and be like, I definitely have 
have known that. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a story about falling out of love or yeah. and back in love with. Well, it's like falling out of love with someone to fall in love with yourself. Yeah, we've Which, all been there. But I think, yeah, I think just it being completely her, you, you hear mm. what it is she's feeling, and you can't. It's like you can't ignore something like that. Yeah, it's, and I think especially now, like it, it reminds me of listening to some of kind of Kurt Cobain's demo recordings where mm. what you hear before anyone else touches it. And it's so hard to actually create something like that. Because yeah. obviously when you're listening to maybe Kurt Cobain's demo recordings or someone like, um, is it Nick Cage, the one who did the cover of Her? No, uh, what's his name? It was um, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash, that's it. Like, you hear some demo recordings of him from when he was younger. Oh, they tug at the heartstrings. Yeah. But they do sound crap. Yeah. Like, they're bad recordings. Which is why um, I was saying the other day to you, my favourite song on Nevermind <clears throat> by Nirvana is Something in the Way. Because um, when they recorded that, they were really struggling to get the performance out of Kurt because it just never felt right. And then Kurt was lying on the sofa in the studio, yeah, singing it to himself. And Butch Fig went stop right there and just mic'd him up, regardless of having room noise, whatever. room noise, having a metronome to keep him in time, anything like that. It was just like his guitar side out of tune. He's lying on his back. Yeah. And it's just that kind of... is the, the moment. The emotion then comes through. Whereas I'd say on... Uh, I mean, Nevermind is an incredible album, but um, in terms of like just being an incredible sort of grunge pop rock album it's 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 like it's banger after banger yeah it's a moment but you connect with that song so much more deeply than some of the others because you know maybe they're slightly more overproduced or you know yeah or maybe even just more thought out yeah there's been more steps in the creative process yeah which is a tough thing because you need steps in the creative process to make something really good. Yeah. But there is a point where it's too much. And clearly, like, a lot of effort has gone into, yeah. into making this record sound as good as it does because that's another thing about it. It does sound incredible. The production is 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 fantastic. And it's not, show, mm. it's not like, showy production. Like, we talked earlier about... I keep coming back to FKA Twigs. I would say mm. that the production on that is really great, but... It's like production that's like, it's showing you that, that it's doing it is, things. Yeah. Um, this is, you've they've recorded a, an artist and her band or the other musicians that are playing on the record just so well. Uh, yeah, I'd say so rather well. than recording, they weren't, it feels like in this process of the studio time, it wasn't so much trying to record the artist performing it was trying to capture the artist mm. performing. Just like actually not worrying about how good it sounds or how well it fits into the mix and just being yeah. like, oh, you and, oh, it seems like so and so is in the mood to do this today. Let's capture that moment. Because yeah. there's some bass parts on this that are super lazy, but, the, but it's perfect. Yeah. And I don't think even the most professional bassist, and also some of the drum parts are the same. I don't think, however professional you are, you couldn't play those parts unless you were in the right mood. Mm. Which will be interesting going to see them live. Yeah. Like, as a full band outfit. But we'll see, maybe we'll do a, we'll go see them live and we'll do a review. <laughs> well, I heard that will be. Yeah, but... It is interesting the difference between being able to capture a live performance and record. And also you've got to bear in mind that this album, I think, that like the process of writing it started about three years ago. Mm. So she's had a lot of time to think about what she wants each instrument and musician to be doing as well. Yeah. Not just, 
here's a song, here's some chords, that's a good bass line, that's a good drum part. Is actually, well, that's a good drum part, but I want you to play it thinking about that one time you had that breakup or mm. that one time when you fell in love with someone. Now you can play it right. And although it might not seem like it's much, I think that is how this album's become so good. It's, yeah. it's people actually thinking and being in the moment rather than worrying about doing the right thing. It's being in the moment of how that... It's almost like playing the album like you're listening to it while you're playing it, if that makes any sense. Say it again. <laughs> so... Leanne Le Havis comes to you and goes, I want you to play a bass line for this album. But first of all, I'm going to basically tell you the whole entire album, how the album's going to make you feel. I now want you to feel that way while you then record mm. to then play to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Which is, it seems like a very long process, but... If you do that, I think it would allow you to actually perform in the way that the album and the Anna Havis's songwriting needed for this. I mean, and the result speaks for itself. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's just a song, it, and also, it's a nice change. It's ten songs. Yeah, I haven't seen a ten-track album in a while. Like, there's no like, there's actually nothing for once. There's nothing I would cut. Yeah. There's like, it's all, I mean, obviously there's always songs you enjoy less. And, yeah. Um, but there's nothing that I uh, uh, listen to on that album that I'm like, ooh. And there's doesn't... no point, because even sometimes you're like, all the songs work together, you've got the up bits, the down bits, the slow bits, whatever. But sometimes there'll be a song that drags on a bit too yeah. long. This doesn't. There's yeah. not really any point where I'm like, oh, we could have pulled this back a little bit. And she even manages to, like, this is not an album that I would think, oh, a natural fit for this album would be a cover of Weird Fishes by Radiohead. Mm. Yet yeah, that starts side two and is, well, I think we both agree superior to the Radiohead version yeah. which I think some Radiohead fans will be like what? Yeah, what? <laughs> but it is and really fits actually and really gives the album a lift like having that to start side two yeah. quite a bold move but really really works I think because it lifts the energy quite a lot yeah I find it interesting that you, like, because I know we spoke about thinking that Leanne's version's actually kind of better than the original Radiohead yeah. track. Do you sometimes, do you think that maybe sometimes, even though Radiohead created that song, the fact that Leanne has probably put so much effort into understanding that song, mm and trying to recreate it in her own way, maybe she actually understands that song more than T Tom York and the rest of Radiohead? Uh, because I doubt Radiohead actually think about that song that much. Yeah, that I often. think I think that's probably true in some cases, and I think maybe in this case you could you could make that argument. Mm. I definitely think there's times when, you know, artists will do a cover or something I on an album. the point that I want to go to off of that is do you think the fact that Leanne has maybe spent so long sitting with these songs mm. and probably listening to her own recordings that she's been able to actually... She's had the reflection period on the album that a lot of artists don't get to listen to it back as an outsider. Yeah. Because after a year, if, if she recorded most of these songs as demos, even a year before going into the studio, imagine how much you've changed over a year. Yeah. To then go back and actually have a chance to re-reflect over the songs. 
and then develop them. Because these days, most people are writing a new album every year. And it's great because the song captures how they feel. This is more like she wrote a load of songs about how she felt. Then they were too raw for her to actually do anything with. And then came back a year or two later, reflected on them. And then was actually able to dive even deeper into the emotions rather than it being this raw like instant reflection on mm. maybe slightly I think you could have, she could have quite easily have gone over the top yeah because that, that is one of the things about this album is that we've talked about how emotional it is but I would say that if you haven't listened to this album and you, if you, and you listen to us talking about it first mm. um, there are some albums that certainly do that where it feels uh, raw the, yeah. the word you just used feels raw and it's like that, taylor that swift wound. is a good example taylor swift is a good example or even someone like maybe like adele yeah um it's like the the wound is very much still open and she's um you know she's she's sort of trying to bandage it up as she's as she's, as she's going saying, yeah whereas this album feels like the wound is healed now and um, it's almost like reading back your own diary so like you're reading the words that you wrote but as you're reading them out you're changing the way you're actually saying them because you're now looking back on back on it and almost you're finding it almost maybe funnier than it was or yeah. actually sadder well you can have you can have experiences in life where um, you know, something at the time seems quite uh, world ending or like a really big deal. Mm. And then, you know, a week goes by, a month goes by, whatever. And you already, like, even after a week, you already have maybe a better perception on it, have had time to process yeah. it a bit more, can, can see... Um, well, every conversation you have between a dis one decision and the next decision, every person that you bump into or form of interaction you have with anything has the ability to completely alter your perception on what's already happened. Yeah. Even if it's, and I know it sounds very like artistic -y, but you break up with somebody and it's that classic image of walking down a beach or something and you just see that one pebble and you pick up a pebble and it's like, <laughs> oh, this pebble. And you're probably delirious because you haven't slept for like 24 hours. Yeah, and you're, and you're still in a state of shock yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But a pebble has just completely changed the way you perceive things. Mm. And if you think about this album like that, like... This has had many pebbles between the actual incident and the kind of reflective period. And it's like, I mean, actually, where's the lyric sheet? Because there's that one lyric, I think it's in Read My, was it Read My Mind? Oh, it's, yeah. It's yeah. Very start. So right, could make a baby tonight, throw my life away, oh, I'll die another day. Like, and the way she sings that almost feels so throwaway. Whereas I feel like that sounds like a line written by someone in the moment. Yeah. But that the sounds, way she sings That's that, a line. That's a thought from, like, the heat of passion. Yeah. When you're so sort of all-consumed that you just fuck the consequences. Like, we're, we're doing this. Yeah. Um... And I'll deal with whatever happens later. Yeah. But like you said, the way she sings it, it doesn't come out in that way in the song. And the fact is the first line of the song is like, hold on, if that's how we're thinking at the start of this song, what's the route we're going to go down? Yeah. Because there's many ways you could go after that. But then, I mean, she goes throughout the song and it just slowly... It's a really nice song to have so early on in the album because it does sum it up because it just, as it goes on, it talks a lot about kind of sweet joy when a girl meets a boy, those eyes caught by surprise. And it's just very, it's very sweet. 
Tobin's in the in in, a, in the not in the wrong order because I would argue it's, it's in the it's right in the order. Perfect order, yeah. But in the in, a, in an order that would be unusual, I think if if it was anyone else writing this song with less reflection, that that opening uh, verse, those opening four lines, yeah, that would be towards the end of the song. Yeah, that would be a, a, almost a climactic moment. Yeah. Whereas could make a baby tonight. Oh, I'll die another day. As like two lines, it's very just like that's a statement. Yeah. That's like Jesus. All right. That yeah. That, yeah. that finishes something. That's a conclusion. Yeah. But instead, she's put it right up front. Yeah. On the second song in the album, which reflects the whole thing, isn't it? Because it's like here's a statement. This is what I've decided to do with my life. But it's not because we've still got another three minutes of that song and mm. eight tracks of an album. It's like, oh, okay, we're about to go on a journey of how you were to who you are now. Yeah. And again, that goes back to why it's interesting putting Bittersweet at the beginning and the end and the of ends. the deluxe edition. Because although she went through all of this trial and tribulation with herself and trying to find her own love she still ended up being her because of course she is like it doesn't matter what you do or who you see or who you meet you will always be you yeah hence why this album is Leanne Habits. because it's her getting back to who she was even though she never stopped being herself yeah I think as well when you hear this sweet at the start and then at the end after you've gone on the journey of the album, you hear "Bittersweet" mm. differently. Um, "Bittersweet," almost. I think. I think when you first first hear "Bittersweet," because of the way she sings it, she sings it with such like emotion, mm. especially the chorus. She sort of belts it out. Yeah, it's almost. It's it's not quite painful, but it, it has that edge to it. Yeah, you you think I I think of it as like a sad song when you first hear it, but actually. When you think about it in the context of like where the album yeah. goes, you can read it actually as like a really quite a positive song. Um, in terms of yeah. like the line "I'm born again," it's like there's still pain in here. Obviously, like bittersweet summer rain, it, it's painful yeah. still, but she's recognizing how she's changed and how it's like a new chance for her and a new opportunity sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's that whole feeling of like everything's disappeared and collapsed, but if nothing is there, you can do whatever you want now. Yeah. You can completely rebuild. So it almost doesn't, it is bittersweet because it sucks. You've just like, you've lost, you've everything, lost your house. But you're almost, freer than you were before yeah you can now build a new house yeah exactly how you wanted it yeah and to be honest this album a lot of the points in it feels like that journey between knowing when you've had a house when you've built a house with somebody for the period of time that she's been with someone you've built this thing up and you almost you you're unsure as where one brick is yours and another brick is theirs and when something's built out of 10,000 bricks there's going to be a point where where is the 5,000 and my 5,000 and their 5,000 like where does it merge which yeah. whose bricks which so when it all comes crashing down you've got to try and rebuild it You're, the automatic reaction is almost to try and find your bricks and rebuild it but you have to completely start again and kind of take it all away or or like or or accept that some of the bricks are going to be someone else's and it's a bit like um yeah that you know when you break up with someone you're not you're you're a different person to who you were before you met them like yeah. just being with someone changes you as a person I suppose, yeah just because you have their bricks it doesn't mean that, that it, they're but bad they're, bricks yeah and yeah and it's um you know you break up with someone you think 
you, you almost think you need to, um, if, if it's a particularly bad breakup, I, I think people think they need to like expunge that other person from their life completely yeah. and not think about them. But they may, they shaped you in some way and you are now, you can't go back, you can't hit undo. Yeah. And so you're, you're stuck with their bricks in a, in a, in a sense. Oh, so suppose, you've got to be happy yeah. with, right, well, I've got to build something new, but some of them are going to be their bricks that they've given me and yeah. that's got to be fine. I'm sure you've met people like I have that, sticking to this brick analogy. Like, <laughs> I'm really going for the brick analogy. Yeah, some people will go through a breakup and they accept it and they will continue to use the bricks from the past and actually like to they accept it as part of themselves yeah and then there's the other people that will literally just build a room that they never visit but occasionally they do there's a room just built out of purely those bricks mm. that they will refuse to go near and god forbid if they accidentally strain near it it just is the intensity of all of that emotion yeah whether it be good memories bad memories whatever it's all so condensed and pushed away it's just far too aggressive and well yeah because i've um i've never quite understood the um and granted i've never really experienced a breakup from a long-term relationship but yes um i've never understood how people can go from loving someone yeah. so much to something happening and you know obviously there's lots of different reasons yeah. why something may end but even so going from loving someone so much to hating them straight away yeah and and hate and being so passionate about hating them and that and come back to marriage story that's why marriage story was such a beautiful yeah. film because Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson's characters, they don't, they still love each other. And there's not yeah. a point in that. I mean, there is one big sort of argument that, that happens, but you realize yeah. that they don't hate each other and they never have hated each other. It's all these other people that have manipulated them into doing certain things yeah. around the divorce. Um, and that's why that film's so beautiful because it could have gone it could have very easily gone in the direction of a, a story about two people divorcing and now they hate each other. And yeah. we spend the whole film seeing them hate each other. And actually, the majority of the film, we see them loving each other, loving each other but realising that it can't and work. And that's what's so sad about the ending is it's yeah. like sometimes however much you love someone, you literally just can't make it work. Yeah. As the same with even like just life. Sometimes you can try as hard as you want to be good at something. Mm. And you just sometimes have to accept it won't work. Yeah. And I definitely think that's something that this album and Marriage Story encapsulate well. And that's what... Because weirdly, I can listen to this album and feel very lifted. Yeah. While at the same time feeling very kind of emotionally crippled by just how real like how real it is about the way it approaches being sad it's just that very like i want to feel sad listening to this but it's so relatable in the sense that everything takes time everything is a process and nothing is just like that nothing about this album just says oh i broke up with someone here's a sad song sad song sad song it's like i broke up with someone this song is going to be sad but let's talk about it honestly. Which is why, you know, I mentioned Adele earlier, and not to slag off Adele, she's hugely popular and successful, yeah. but Adele has never connected with me because it's always felt like her albums are, I've just broken up with someone, here's a bunch of songs why I'm really pissed off and sad. Yeah. And it never feels like there's the... It's not a journey. It's not a journey. And also there's, I think that's quite... Um, what's the word? I almost want to say shallow, but I feel like that's too harsh. It's removing the idea that humans and relationships are complex and every situation is complex mm. and there are complexities something. And to 
to boil it down to just being sad and uh, yeah. angry is it disregards all other yeah. aspects of human emotion. Like there have been times where something bad has happened in my life, but there's um, other things happening. There's other things happening, and half an hour later, I can be made laugh. I can I can yeah. laugh at something, or I can yeah. I can still feel joy about something. Now, I I I obviously understand that. You know, for some people, that's not possible. You know, if you're in the depths of depression, I understand that for some people, as someone who's never really been gone through it, I'm sure for some people, life can just be a fucking grey cloud of yeah sadness but, but it's still relative there's still a yeah and there's still a complexity to it that i think um just an a, a, a breakup album is usually just very one note in yeah. terms of like one singular emotion and what this does so perfectly and what marriage does, story does does so perfectly and it almost feels like we've put marriage story in this as like a double bill <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, they do give. The they same. do really fit together, and it's it's about the complexity. I think. Yeah, it's the detail in the complexity of what actually causes humanity. Mm. Really, it's a very human album. Yeah, you listen to it, and it's just like that is what life is. It's these ebbs and wanes of love and stress and because i think that's why i get a little bit from the radiohead cover there's a slight stress to it almost like a yeah. frustration it's like the whole world is just like it almost like it almost feels like the way leanne's singing it is like she's trying to develop faster than the world is keeping up with her like almost she's got over things and she wants to move past stuff but everything else is holding her back yeah and that's almost just as negative on your like your process as being behind everyone else yeah because suddenly people kind of start can start judging you for rushing things in the same way that people can be like oh stop being so depressed just like come on let's go out it's almost the opposite like stop going out <laughs> yeah it's like that weird band the album dips and wanes through that well like bittersweet I think is a song um, that is about so many different things. And like mm. I said, like the way I said that you can hear it at the start of the album, at the end of the album, you feel different ways. Mm. But like that song is, is I feel like that song's quite tense. It's got like a tension to it that drives that song. I think it's the driving sort of yeah. drum beat that's going on. Um, and it's like a it's a sexual tension yeah it's a uh a love tension which is not a word but it's yeah, like yeah it's it's a sexual thing it's a love thing it's an anger thing it's a sadness thing all wrapped up in one song yeah um just in the way that she sings bittersweet is a bittersweet summer rain yeah. isn't it just the way she sings it and the line itself Bitter, sweet, summer rain. Yeah. It's four it, contradictions in yeah, one sentence. none of it makes sense. Yeah. But the way she sings it and applies it, like, as, as a timbre, it actually conveys all of those words perfectly. And it is exactly how you feel. Yeah. In any situation where you're just frustrated or sad or like you've just gone through a breakup or you've just lost your job or it's that bittersweet summer rain. It's it is almost a phrase that I hope could come become a thing because it's that yeah. you just don't know how to deal with the situation because it's like, oh, I hate my job, but I've just been made redundant or, oh, I really wanted some time off, but now it's a pandemic or yeah. I really didn't want to be in that relationship and now they've broken up with me. It's like, it's great, but it's also hard. Bittersweet summer rain is just like, oh, just fits so well. Sums up the whole, I'm surprised you didn't actually call the album Bittersweet. 
to yeah, say. Yeah, and she could have done and it would have been... It would have worked. Um, let's talk about, actually, the fact that it's co- it is self-titled, which we did touch, again, we touched upon in the Arcade Fire yeah. um, podcast, and I compared it to Kiwanuka by Michael Kiwanuka, and Kiwanuka felt like an album that was very much him embracing himself, his, his history, his history, his heritage, you know, the fact that he had a, a painting of him dressed up as an African king on the cover, all that yeah. kind of stuff fed into that. And again, here, it's, she's self-titled it and it feels so completely about her. Yeah. I still, it still fascinates me that so many artists, again, like Adele, Ed Sheeran, Alicia Keys, all of the greats have always strived to make songs that are universally, like, accessible. Yeah. Yeah, you can, if you can actually manage to make something this accurate onto a personal level and this honest, even though it's called Leanne Le Havis and it's her face in large on the cover, and every song is obviously directly related to her situation, it's so much more upsetting and exciting and understandable than anything I've ever heard from any pop album. Uh, It's weird. You would think that it being this personal would stop people from being able to access it. Mm. But I think the reason why this makes for such a good album and such a very... I don't I I for me personally it's almost a hard album to listen to because it makes you reflect on yourself. When you see someone reflecting this deeply on themselves in such a very open setting, like could you ever imagine writing an album about yourself in this much depth mm. and then publishing it to the world? Yeah. It kind of makes you do that. Look, I, or at least I find it makes me do that a bit to myself while I'm listening to it. Like, oh, Jesus, maybe I should be thinking about the way Leanne's singing. These, like, she's obviously reflected on that point of her life and that thing that happened and this emotion and the fact that she's reflected, I want to reflect, rather than just going, yeah, you sing it, girl. I know what you're saying. It's like, oh, I... I know what you're saying, but I've never tried to deal with it in the way you're dealing with it Yeah. in these songs. There's almost something interesting about the artwork as well in, in the fact that if we talk about it being a personal record, how she's being so open mm. and honest and revealing herself, yet you can't see her eyes on the cover because it's covered by her hair. You can see her smile, but you can't see her eyes. Yeah. And you, we talk about Adele those Adele records she's looking right at your face at the camera you can see her right you can see everything Mm. and I almost feel like maybe that and this is me reading very into it very into it that's what we do but I feel like it's more honest because maybe she's holding back a little bit in the sense of she's being very open Mm. and very honest but she's also I don't think you would write an album like this if you were sure of yourself yeah she's keeping a little bit back for herself and or there's something she's not quite sure of yeah and I think the fact that you can't see her eyes very clearly in the artwork Mm. almost reflects that in the sense of... And then even on the inside um, photos, like, she's not looking at us in this one while we're close to her. She is looking at us in this one, but we're kept at a bit more of a distance. Yeah. So we're not being fully let in because Mm. she... Either she's learned... Or she's um, trying not to give herself too completely to someone as it appears it has been in this album, yeah. in this relationship that he's talking about. Yeah. Or that she doesn't know completely who she is. 
but the smile suggests she's like she's kind of all right with that yeah whereas the adele cover of her looking straight at you and i've just gone through a terrible thing yeah. and i'm going to tell you and all I'm about moody, it and i'm going to tell you all this feels a little bit more like insincere because it's like yeah because it's a bit like well great but like there's not you're just yeah. you're almost just you're just like you're just like talking at me another good example of an album that does something similar to this in its artwork is it's um brockhampton's i want to say fifth album called ginger and apparently i think there'd been like there was loads of because usually they put quite a lot of effort into their artwork there's a bit of a concept to it and they spent ages while writing the album trying to create different bits of artwork and then i think something happened there was some sort of fight between them and it got really heated while they were all drunk and they were all up all night and then they started hugging afterwards like in the early hours in the morning and one of their photographers managed to capture a picture of one of them hugging after a night of fighting and huh. arguing about like because this was just after they signed rca right after releasing three albums in a year and there was this whole tension around can they still make an album that is Brockhampton. Yeah. And rather than trying to work really hard to do this incredible piece of artwork for their first or second real label signed album, it was just a picture of two of the members hugging and you can't see their faces. It's almost unrecognizable to which members they are, but it was just a moment that was captured. And you don't have to know what happened to, to look at that hug and understand that feeling in the same way that you look at the and have a smile here and you're like i know how it feels to look like that yeah like that genuine like i'm just happy i never look as good as that but. no <laughs> but you can see her there and it's like that's someone that will get hurt again yeah like we all will but she's also aware of it and yeah. that's why she's enjoying it so much it's being able to capture that and stick it on an album that makes it so good. Yeah. Because you look at that and it's like, that's someone who's much more willing to just do what she needs to do than try and make an album about love sucking. Does this... So as someone who's just gone through a breakup themselves... Yeah. And you're listening to an album of someone reflecting on their breakup, does this feel like a hopeful album to you or like you know what i mean because it's quite there were there is some hope to this album and does it is it hopeful to you or is it like sad like as someone who's pretty much going through it like what emotions does this album sort of pull out of you other than the ones we've discussed the last hour yeah i think it's it's so much I would, if somebody was going for a breakup that I knew, I'd much rather hand them this album than again, like an Adele mm. or, or even like a Nirvana album. Like this is such a, it's that, again, it's that reflection time. It's like being able to go, it says it sucks. Like the whole yeah. album is like, it hurts, it sucks but that's okay and it will get better. Mm. And it kind of allows the album to kind of even sings about how tough it is, but yet it will be okay. And it kind of repeats that throughout. Mm. And it does, it's that weird one of like, it does make you sad listening to it because it does make you think, oh, I am going to miss it in the same way that Leanne sings about how she misses some of the intimate moments and the fun moments. But then reflecting on it is, but now you know what you like or mm. who you are or places you've gone and the memories you've formed. Like, it's that kind of a bit of sweet sadness yeah. of like... Because also, if you think about it in terms of like, um, like Leanne is a friend talking to you about her own situation yeah. to help you through yours, right? Yeah. Um, there is an annoying thing when you're going through a certain thing where p 
people can be one of two ways sometimes they can either be yeah everything's shit isn't it and it's really shit yeah. <laughs> and that doesn't make you feel better no. but then equally the people who also sit there and go um, oh everything's going to be alright you're going to yeah. be fine don't worry about it it's yeah. going to be that's also kind of annoying as it's, well. It's the reverse annoying. It's the, it's the opposite end of the yeah. same spectrum. Having someone that goes, yeah, it's a bit shit, mate. But let's like, work through it together. But being able to talk about the good and the bad about something yeah, is like what gets you through things. And then also is like what makes you realise like which friends you go to in a, in a time like that. And also what situations you want to get yourself into and what sort of life you want to live. Because mm. I've had it, like I think the hardest relationship I've ever had is music and doing creativity as a thing. Mm. Because you get shat on all the time. Yeah, It is a constant fight. And there's incredible highs. Yeah, And then the next moment you're like, yeah. fuck. And you can't just break up with it, run away and never see it again. The only way you can do that is by literally taking your brain out. Like, yeah. you can't escape it. Because you're always going to love it. You're always yeah. going to be in love with it. Yeah. So, like, I in think... In some way. And, like, I think that's why so many great musicians, poets, artists, that's why people turn to them, even people who know nothing about music or art or whatever, will turn to music and film because it's like these are the people that actually deal with love and hate for the same thing day in day out and even we, if they don't realize that yeah, yeah we kind of any creative even if they're not aware of it they know exactly how it feels to hate and love something at the same time yeah and want to break up with something yet be unable to live without it that's what leanne's done something that I think a lot of artists aim for and or like at least try to understand that they're doing something like this that they don't achieve I think yeah Leanne Havis can be quite happy that she's achieved this record thank you for listening and watching the podcast if you liked what you heard and watched then please do subscribe on YouTube subscribe at whatever podcast platform you're listening on share with your friends follow us in the so on the social media channels that are listed in the description of this podcast and join us next time when we will be talking about george led zeppelin free also james didn't mention it don't forget to press subscribe and hit that bell oh yeah hit the bell for the notifications and all that um, there's so many things to remember these days please. now that we're both filming and um, recording it's all going mad. Because soon we might be putting these on Instagram and it will be like, can you just heart it, put a comment, you know, send it to your mates. Too many things. But Too that's fine. Many things. But that's fine. Thank you for listening and for watching. Until next time, goodbye. Bye.